the book uh, it's many pages thick and I'm not going to talk about those many pages. What is important about it is that the contributors are so diverse. I couldn't believe it. Both international and national. They represent exactly what Albert Nolan was about. You know, this diversity for me, it's extraordinary. It's um, the themes that are covered in the book, the various disciplines that are dealt with are extraordinary. Uh, this, according to Timothy Ratcliffe, I just want to quote you um, in your four words. Um, he says that this diversity is a reflection of the extent to which Albert Nolan impacted on our lives and our communities and, and the people we worked with. Mike Deep continues on the same theme by saying that the diversity provides a rich kaleidoscope of Albert, the brother, he calls him the Dominican preacher, the priest, the chaplain, the pastor, the mentor, the theologian, the intellectual, the political activist, and a friend. I thought that I knew his underground work because we did lots of underground work with him. Uh, when I went to the funeral, I thought there must be lots of the friends here, including his Catholic friends and Dominicans, who wouldn't have known that, hey, this father used to do underground work, you know. So I thought I would share that with you. But actually, I've now discovered there's more I didn't know, even when I was underground with him. He took care of me. He set up the logistics. He nearly made me a Catholic, by the way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> almost. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, I was in Catholic convents and Jesuits and the brothers. You know, the, the Catholic church has got lots of hiding places than any other church. <laughs> I mean, in my church, I would have been picked up very quickly. They really took care of me. And I thought I knew him. I knew he was involved in funding. I knew he was helping victims. I knew that he, he, he smuggled my manuscript, No Life of My Own, to be published in London Institute for International Relations. I thought I knew all of that. Until I read Horst Kleinsmith. You know, go and read Horst Kleinsmith. Eh? When you read that, you will know that he was not only doing underground work. He even had a number, 42. The code for Albert Nolan, it's number 42. And coded like that, he sent messages out of the country and into the country, and he never got caught. No one ever decoded that quote. It's, he says, Operative 42. You know, please read Operative 42, then you'll know who Albert Nolan was. I mean, he did risky things for the sake of our liberation struggle. We are where we are because of people like Albert Nolan. As you know, my pain about South Africa is that it is not what we fought for. And for those who pay the price, it is very painful to see it. And so my last meeting with him was about that matter. I had to say to him, like I said to Archbishop Desmond Tutu, I also visited him and we sat there and he was really stressed about what's happening in South Africa. I said, please don't stress about it. Those who are still able to do something uh, will take care of it because you can't do anything about it. And I said the same to my brother, uh, Albert Nolan, Please don't stress about because you can't do anything about it. You know, you reach a stage where you can't do anything about it. 
But those who are able to do something who are not doing it must be declared guilty of failure. Those of us who are quiet and do nothing and are afraid are, are party to this pain of our people. We can't let people to be rich at the expense of the people. We fought for this freedom and we must make sure that we sustain it